you are still at Owanapedia, the one-stop center for the history of this country. This is Tony Geoffrey Owana with Herbert Semiano in charge of all operations. Tony Owana Banange, have you subscribed to Wanapedia? <laughs> I don't know what you are waiting for. When I addressed the seminar on the administration of justice last month, I talked about the, pro the, the pro problem of legal technicalities. This is the one factor that is widening the gap between justice in the popular sense and justice according to the law. In my opinion, justice is ind indivisible and there cannot be categories of it. If, for example, a murderer or a robber escapes punishment because of some legal technicality, there may be justice according to the law, but to all intents and purposes, there has been no justice at all. Banange, have you subscribed to Wanapedia? <laughs> I don't know what you are waiting for. Where are we? We are at the Uganda International Conference Center where President Yoweri Museveni is meeting members of the Uganda Law Society way back on 25th of February 1987 when they invited him to exchange views with them. This was very healthy. What can I say? For instance, when President Amin had a problem with the law, especially where granting bail was concerned, he did not call Parliament because it had been abolished. He did not call Uganda Law Society. He just killed the Chief Justice Ben Chiwanuka. So when you get a president who can talk before he acts, if presidents have to act, I think that that meeting was very healthy. So in the course of giving his own views, the president also raised the issue of legal terminologies and laws that had taken long on the statute books, which had ceased to have meaning to many of the ordinary people. Seven is fond of making references to his native Banyankole, the way they perceive the law. And from an intellectual point of view, you feel a bit pissed off to say, this man is taking us back to culture. But then you must realize many people first think in a native way before they interpret the law. So let's take a look at his presentation on the subject of legal gymnastics and niceties to the land friends. Katse of Oanapedia. It is not easy to guarantee security for the future without punishing the past criminals. At least, even if you don't punish all of them, you can excuse some of them depending on the degree of responsibility of crime. But to say that all of them should be excused unconditionally is very unwise. It will endanger the future of our country. When I addressed the seminar on the administration of justice last month, I talked about the, pro the, the pro problem of legal technicalities. This is the one factor that is widening the gap between justice in the popular sense and justice according to the law. In my opinion, justice is ind indivisible and there cannot be categories of it. If, for example, a murderer or a robber escapes punishment because of some legal technicality, there may be justice according to the law, but to all intents and purposes, there has been no justice at all. Because in reality, injustice has been upheld by a court of law because a criminal has escaped. And people know that justice has not been done. They know it, the population know it. They do not have to be educated to know this. 
Contrary to what some people believe, popular justice does not mean justice which is impure or tainted or perverted. Nor does it mean mob justice. It simply means justice which people appreciate and understand. If justice continues to be administered above the heads of our people, they are bound to demand an overhaul of the system so that they get in its place something that they fully appreciate and that conforms to their ideas and values. We must therefore ensure that technical rules which hamper the proper administration of justice in our courts are reformed. As much as possible, we must ensure that cases are lost only on grounds of merit and not on technicalities. Really, you are doing uh, uh, um, a harm to justice if you throw out a case, in my opinion, as a layman, because me, I'm, I'm in the crowd, I'm, I'm among the masses. I'm just there among the crowd where I shout, Chinochitufu, this is right. This is my sense of justice. If you throw out a case just on technicalities, I'm sure you're doing damage to, 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 to the courts and to the justice itself. It is not just to throw a case out of court, for example, because the plaint does not disclose a cause of action, <laughs> or the charge is defective. Opportunities must be given to amend the document so that the court proceeds to hear the case in, on its merits. What's wrong if the thing has been written badly? Go and write it again. <laughs> eh? I should also like to see the rigid separation between a criminal court and the civil court dismantled so that there is no undue delay in getting redress from the court. As I said earlier, if an embezzler is convicted of embezzlement, he must repay immediately the funds embezzled, otherwise his property should be sold to realize the amount embezzled. Similarly, I should like to see a citizen who is wronged or injured by a criminal compensated by the criminal immediately in the same court which convicts him because of legal technicalities, person can hardly present, an ordinary person can hardly present a case in court. At the same time, he, can, he cannot hire the services of a legal practitioner because we have become too expensive. So he's helpless. It is only the rich who can afford to pay for your legal services and for whom you will use your accumulated knowledge of legal technicalities to win cases usually against the poor. In what sense, then, can we meaningfully talk about equality before the law if the lawyers and the courts are only at the service of the rich? You have educated society which educated you in the first place and enabled you to get this high training. You should therefore make your legal services accessible to society as a whole and not just a small fraction of it. You should lower your fees so that justice can also be accessible to the ordinary person. The law at the present is that you should not undercut by charging less than the fees set out in the scale of charges. The law should now, now should be that you should not overcharge by charging more than the fees set out in the scale of charges. <laughs> the new scale should immediately be worked out by the appropriate authority. Some countries have legal aid schemes where legal services are given free. The law should now, now should be that you should not overcharge by charging more than the fees set out in the scale of charges. <laughs> the new scale should immediately be worked out by the appropriate authority. Some countries have legal aid schemes where legal services are given free of charge or at a nominal fee to those members of society who may not be able to afford lawyers' fees. This is something which the law society, in conjunction with the government, can establish in this, court, in this country. I'm glad to hear that you are already talking about it. But the law society should play the preponderant part. Every lawyer, for example, can be required to put in one day in a month to give free legal services to the poor, which you have already agreed to do. The scheme can also mount a program on the radio, in newspapers, community centers, schools, women clubs, ETC, to educate the people as to their legal rights and obligations so that some people do not take advantage of their ignorance of the law to exploit them. 
because of the problems inherent in the law that we adopted from the British, such as complexity of evidence and procedure, corruption in the courts, delays in hearing and disposing of cases, and of course, costs of litigation. The National Resistance Council is soon going to enact a statute giving judicial powers to resistance committees to hear cases that are common in the countryside, such as land disputes, cattle trespass, simple assaults, theft, etc. The committees will exercise these judicial powers at village, Moluka, and Gombara levels. Cases will be heard expeditiously as the procedures will be simple and no fees will be charged. These committees have been operating in a judicial capacity even before the enactment of this law, and they have so far been doing very well. In fact, recently I saw a man from one of the districts, and he told me that the police are now very hungry. You know, I'm really amused by the philosophical capacity of the people. These peasants whom you, are, maybe you don't talk to peasants, but me, I talk to peasants. And they are very clever people. Now, this man came and told me, of course, when I translate it in English, it loses meaning. When he's speaking it in vernacular, it's very precise. And he said the police are now very hungry. And uh, if he's your friend, you can for, have pit on him and give him a, a bunch of bananas. Uh, that's the only thing you will enjoy. I said, why? He says, because the committees are settling all the cases. You see? They're settling all the cases. So the policemen are completely unemployed. <laughs> and their services from which they were getting some pecuniary uh, rewards uh, the need are no longer needed. So I, I really, so the, this, these committees are already exercising judicial powers, <clears throat> de facto. The other day, the owner of Njuba was trying to rein them in because they had de facto taken over the powers. <laughs> Any possible weakness that is discovered in due course shall be immediately corrected by an appropriate amendment to the statute. We also intend that those who apply to court, for instance, before I leave this section, I, I wish to acquaint you with our experience in Ruero, here in the bush. At that time, we were controlling all the Gomboras in Nakaseke County, or uh, some of the Gomboras in Chadondo, like uh, Gombe, and uh, Nyimbwa, some of the Gomboras in Busiro, like Masurita, Kachiri, Wakso, uh, Namayumba, I think Namayumba is also in Busiro, and half of what we call Singo, that is to say the Gomboras of Sunju, Chikandwa, Bukomero, Ramata, uh, Chiboga, Bukwiri, and a bit of, Ka of Kasanda and Bukuya. So, uh, and then uh, we also controlled uh, some Gomboras in uh, Wabsana, that is to say Chichusa and all that, and part of Bururi. This was a big area. And in 1982, we worked out, which you could look at actually, we worked out a, a legal code for our area. And uh, roughly, it was like this. All criminal and civil cases, other than murder, and prison were tried by the resistance councils. Very simple. Murder and prison were tried by the high command. <laughs> were tried by the high command of the National Resistance Army. And I was the chairman of the <laughs> of, of the high command. So I was the Chief Justice. <laughs> We also intend that those who apply to court for letter of administration to be given authority, authority to administer the estate of disease, deceased persons should pass through the chairman of the residence committee of the village and the parish in which the deceased resided. Notices of application appearing in newspapers which are only confined to Kampala. Now imagine, 
you give a notice that somebody's estate is going to be divided up and it is put in a newspaper here in Kampala. And this man is living in, uh, in uh, uh, Chikamulo or Kabogwe in Kapeka or in Adlang in uh, Achori. Do you, do you really think this is serious? These notices are not enough. We would like interested persons in the village and parish to know that someone has applied to administer the estate so that if they have any objection, they can raise it immediately. The committees can also be tremendous, can, can, can be of tremendous help to the administrator general in his work of administering the estate. There is a lot that we could have learned from our customer laws if we had cared to create soon after independence an independent and suitable legal system in this country. Enforcement of African laws and customs depended on two principles, namely reliance on the parties concerned to accept the judgment of the elders and on the fear of upsetting the balance of nature or the community, either, either of which might lead to the destruction or, or punishment of the wrongdoer and the faulting party. While the African legal systems recognized the place and value of the individual, that recognition was invariably linked with the sustenance and survival of the family and the community. The interest of the latter always prevailed over the claims of the individual. This was a political and legal concept to be taught and memorized by every African child. The superiority of, com of communal interests was so well embedded in society that any individual who defied it was instantly punished, more often than not, by his own close relatives. There were, of course, some weaknesses and gaps in our customer law. It was not an advanced system as far as commerce and technology were concerned. Its rules relating to the identification of certain wrongdoers left a great deal to be desired. But its emphasis on confining the settlement of disputes among the immediate families, clans, and elders of the respective parties encouraged the understanding and respect for the law as well as cohesion within society. Thus, there is much good which, which we should not allow to disappear altogether in the name of catching up with civilization. I would like the Law Reform Commission, as a matter of urgency, to come up with proposals concerning a new marriage and divorce law so that we can get rid of the present law of marriage and divorce. It is absurd, in my opinion, that we should be having this law, which was passed in England in the 19th century, on our such books. Even England has since drastically amended this law, but we, who should not have had it in the first place, are still applying it. <laughs> this law, which forces every man to marry one wife. <laughs> uh, the person in charge of editing, this Herbert Semiano, decided that we must end at the issue of this law making people have one wife. I don't know why he, he wanted it that way, but I think it is a serious matter. Right now, we are having trouble with the domestic relations laws of this country, including the ones of marriage. People want uh, cohabiting to become a form of marriage. But believe you me, some of us are lucky to have been around. Those of you who are not, you better know that these matters were not discussed only yesterday. This matter came up in 1987, as we shall see shortly when we get back. Stay tuned. <laughs> Banange, have you subscribed to Wanapedia? <laughs> I don't know what you are waiting for.